Aloha, and welcome back to Politics and Learn in Hawaii with Dennis Isaki on Think Tech Hawaii. Today we'll be speaking with Scott Nunokawa, a housing developer, contractor, consultant, builder, uh, among other things. Uh, I first met Scott when he was working with C. Brewer when they owned a part of Kaloko Reservoir a long time ago. Maybe I'm not supposed to talk about that, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got it. It's a yeah, painful also, memory, also, but, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. He also uh, is a founding member of a nonprofit called Kaipu Kukui Fellows, helping the younger generation. We'll learn more about it later. He's married to Aonani Lem from my hometown of Anahola, Kauai. Scott, welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. Thanks, Dennis. Please tell us a little more about your background and how you got into housing. Um, sure. Uh, well, first, let me start by I don't really like talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you asked me to come on the show. Yeah, yeah. It probably is important that um, uh, I give a little, a little bit of background because that way at least people have a framework why, you know, I have some sort of knowledge about a little bit with regards to the issue of housing. So, um, my my degree actually I'm a um, uh, proud uh, graduate of UH Manoa uh, with a degree in finance um, in the early 1980s, um, and I went to work right out of school for a small developer who at that time was doing historic renovations of um, uh, buildings in downtown Honolulu, and we take the buildings, we renovate them, and lease them out, and I um, basically did every job imaginable. Uh, we kind of pivoted from there into um, uh, the housing market. And um, in about 1988, um, I had an opportunity to move to Maui, which had been always been my goal. I had spent a lot of time growing up on Maui um, to um, work with a, a developer by the name of Jesse Spencer on some projects in um, the Kihei area uh, and spent a number of years down there doing that. And again, kind of because um, this wasn't big entities. Uh, my background was as diverse from finding land, figuring out what the zoning is, getting entitlements and that sort of thing to literally to customer service, turning over keys to people and whatnot. And I found that that kind of middle of the bell curve housing, workforce housing, affordable housing, call it what you will, um, really uh, was something that I wanted to be doing with my life. You know, I, I feel like everybody, you know, they work in part because everybody needs to put a roof over their head you know, food on the table. Hopefully, um, uh, if you're lucky enough to have kids to be able to educate them, et cetera. But if you're real lucky, you have an opportunity to participate in something that does your heart good as well. And I found that building housing for particularly for what I call local folks or, you know, workforce housing was was something that I really enjoyed doing. So was that before you went to work for C. Brewer? Yeah, before I went to work for C. Brewer. I actually went to work, C. Brewer actually um, uh, reached out to me because of the work I had been doing with Jesse Spencer, um, because they had some projects coming up that they needed project management. And that's, um, if, if I had to say I'm any one thing, I would say that that's probably what my background is, 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 is project management. So um, my uh, eldest was um, newly born, and um, I, I looked at the opportunity at C. Brewer, and it provided a paycheck. I wasn't going to get wealthy, but it provided a paycheck, and it provided medical insurance. I was going to be able to pay my mortgage. Yeah. Cool. You know, I, I, I'll go do that for a while. And um, it was a very interesting experience there. You know, I... I um, uh, I touched on quite a bit of housing. You know, I, I started to do the math and whatnot. And um, I probably had some involvement, whether it's early planning or the production thereof, of literally thousands of houses. Um, the sad part about it is, is that in that time, I probably 10 times that many was in some le level involved with things that were never produced, you know, for all sorts of different reasons. Um, some of which are some of the issues why we have the kind of housing crisis that we have today. 
Um, from there, C. Brewer uh, was really struggling for a variety of different reasons. Um, uh, part of it was the structure of when they went um, to, to become a, um, uh, a publicly held company. Um, but when my new boss came to me and said, you know what, um, we're going to promote you and we're going to you know, make you basically a realtor to sell off parcels of our, our land. I, I said, you know, I'm, that's just not what I'm interested in doing in my, with my life. You know, I, I'm here to produce housing. If I can't do that, it's time, you know, to find other opportunities. At this uh, very shortly thereafter, I was compa- uh, contacted by AMFAC. And Didn't uh, they sell off uh, some, of, some of the... Well, did they sell off the whole company, Seabrook, well, afterwards? When I got moved to this new role, I actually sold um, two parcels um, that were part of our critical parcel inventory to other parties. Um, I was also put in charge of the work that you and I did together uh, briefly and t- uh, yeah. preliminarily on the t- expansion of Kalihuai Ridge on Kauai. Oh, yeah, I, that's right. Yeah. I was told to put that on the market as well, and ultimately that was sold off as well. Um, after I left the company, um, the company was actually renamed to Hawaii Land and Farming and then sold to Stanford Car. Right, right. And um, th- then it's um, it's gone through a couple of iterations, and uh, but that was kind of the end of it for me, you know, um, with regards to C. Brewer. Um, I, then I went to, like I said, I was approached by AMFAC because they, um, they, they, they actually had an ambitious goal of trying to, um, plan for the future of Kaunapali Resort. And we're talking thousands of acres surrounding the resort. Um, and it appealed to me because they really seemed very committed you know, it's a, by then it was a Chicago, JMB owned them. It was a, it's a Chicago based um, ownership at this point. Um, and they had gone at, at the time that, that I was brought on, they had gone literally a decade without getting ki- any kind of an entitlement um, permit for any of their lands. Um, and so I was asked to try to help provide um, a community um, based planning process that was really engaging the community as versus you have little charrettes and people get to kind of pretend they think they're involved, et cetera, but they're really not. Um, and it actually was, um, in spite of the fact that I ended up leaving the company, it really was one of the things that restored my faith in if circumstances are set up properly, you can get a broader community to head in the same direction and do the right thing. Um, And there was a lot of really good early planning work for that, which included literally thousands of of affordable or workforce housing units that sadly to this day, this is 20 plus years ago, still have not been produced. Um, Yeah, I think I worked on some on Kauai, uh, cutting out the home sites for the uh, plantation workers. Uh, at the plantations on Kauai. Yeah, so Wait, it's, yeah. and uh, this is not any a, a negative assessment of yeah. JP. You know, there's lots of reasons why this didn't occur. Um, but we did have a platform and a means of engaging the community that actually was better than I had seen in probably my entire career, quite frankly. Um, at that point, for a variety of reasons, um, I left AMFAC and um, uh, my wife, whose background is in um, land use, uh, and I decided to form our own company to do um, some uh, uh, single family subdivisions on our own. Um, and we did for, gee, 10 years, we did that and ultimately um, decided that we kind of had enough of um, particularly anything having to do with entitlement process or, or, or that sort of thing. Um, it, it just became so unbearable and so brutal um, that it just, it, it really wasn't worth the toll that it was taking, you know? 
So you did most of your um, your housing development uh, on your own on the island of Maui. Um, all I when I was at Amfac, I had I mean, excuse me, when I was at um, C Brewer, I had a project uh, on the Big Island, right on the other side of the Wailuku River from Hilo Town. Um, that was another one. Like I said, I, I've, I've spent a, a, a lot of my life with stuff that never actually got built, uh, which is part of my frustration. Yeah. Um, that particular project took over 10 years to get to the point that it was. And the entitlement um, uh, conditions were so onerous that it made the, the project unworkable. Um, I had a couple of projects on Kauai when I was at Sea Brewer. Um, similarly, that was a little bit different a circumstance. That was more market timing and that sort of thing. And quite frankly, it wasn't what I call middle of the bell curve housing anyway. It was, you know, like Kalihiwai, the expansion of Kalihiwai Ridge, which is more of a um, gentleman uh, uh, farm estate kind of a thing. So um, when that didn't go, you know, it wasn't quite as frustrating as some of the other stuff that, that I've been involved with. Um, but primarily, um, you know, I, I've done a couple of projects on Oahu early in my career, but primarily my, my work has been done on the island of Maui, yeah. Well, about how many homes would you say you created on Maui? Um, well, I kind of differentiate between things that I was directly involved with. I mean, in other words, yeah. I, I I put a nail in, the, in, in a piece <laughs> of wood or something of that nature and stuff that... I helped plan that ultimately yeah, yeah. got built. Um, on the one side, I would say um, the, the, that I was somehow actively involved with its creation, probably close to a thousand, oh, uh, either a lot. lots or house lots. And then probably three or four times that in stuff that has ultimately been produced that I didn't take it through subdivision and, and uh, do the vertical or, or sell the, 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 the vacant lots kind of a thing. So did you deal with uh, HFDC or the county housing agencies? Well, funny you should ask that question, yeah. then. <laughs> yeah. I was actually hired by Seabrew Homes to do a project at the Village of Zaleli. And unbeknownst to me, because I was, you know, I didn't know anything about any of this stuff, right? I went out there and they were, I was told that it was, it was going to be fee simple, uh, sale to um, residents, X percent needed to be affordable. And we had our project all lined up, et cetera. It's ready to turn, be turned over to us. HFDC has awarded the bid to us. And lo and behold, um, DHHL, or more specifically, OHA, decides that they have a problem with it. And quite frankly, in hindsight, I understand why. You know, I mean, this was uh, these projects were being done on ceded lands. And the ledge that had um, passed a law letting them do the, uh, this. Um, but there was a, a fundamental issue with regards to whether or not it is appropriate to alienate ceded lands. And therefore, um, uh, OHA. Um, filed suit to stop the project. And I started doing a lot more research into what it was. And I, I, I went to my boss and I said, you might as well lay me off or find me other some someplace else to go. Because number one, this thing isn't going anywhere soon. And number two, I'm not sure I want to be involved with it. You know, my, my wife and children are all, ma all made of Hawaiian. Um, I'm not positive. That's, yeah, I, I'm not, I don't think I feel good about that. Let's put it that way. Um, and fortunately for me, C. Brewer transferred me to another part of the company, and I worked on other projects since then. So I did have extensive, um, albeit short, um, interactions with HFDC. It is a, a, not a funny thing, because I was on the HFDC board at that time. Yeah. Then uh... I, I, I knew that after the fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you and I didn't know each other yet. Yeah, so. yeah. Then... Um... They they were gonna do a master plan community there on each island. They didn't do one on Kauai because the then mayor didn't want it, and then went over to the big island and Kealakehi mm -hmm. and and Kapolei on the big island and on Oahu. But um, you understand that went I guess went back to the state after. She, didn't you guys put in the 
Well, the, the, the nice mess, thing about the all this, yeah. yeah, so the nice thing is, is that um, that 100 and, I can't remember, 116 maybe lot um, subdivision, it was all, the subdivision improvements were all in. So what they did is they um, traded with the HHL for some of their back, what they back o- owed. So that's actually a DHHL project. Right. So to me, it was one of those things that um, it worked out really well in the end, in, in my mind. You know, you, you, you got some people on the land um, in, in, probably in the manner that it should have been done, you know, kind of a thing. Well, one good thing that uh, I think there was the Act 15, you get expedited stuff at that time, right? Yeah. So you could well, get the backbone infrastructure in. Well, and that that was part of what frustrated me was that um, there was somewhere between 10 and $15 million of taxpayer dollars that had been put into the land out there without the issue of ceded lands being resolved. And it just seemed kind of the tail wagging the dog a bit to me, you know, as a taxpayer, it yeah. did. Um, but it does also kind of tell you that from where I sit, and of course, you know, my background is in, you know, as a private entity, you know, kind of thing, that there are things that government can do to help. And there's some things that government can do that they're not very good at doing. <laughs> Generally, bad things happen as a result of it. Um, and I, I'm not sure that the complexity of what was going on out there was within the process of um, what, what government is going to do well. You know, uh, kind of a thing. Yeah. So, getting back to things that did work out, <laughs> uh, you have your um, housing projects. Um, you got to do the planning. I mean, your wife is an attorney, right? So, um, how do you see the uh, per- planning and permitting process going? Well, when we stopped in about 2010 um how said that's it i'm done you know there for a variety of reasons not the least of which was um it just had become so brutal and so many people think it's so easy and everybody's getting wealthy beyond their dreams etc and they feel that it's just fine to attack you um you know with, with no basis you know kind of a thing um part of it was that part of it is when you're on your own and you're doing things the way that we were doing them, every project is sort of an all in, you know, the bank wants everything you own put up as collateral. And she said, you know, I'm just not willing to do that anymore. Um, I said, you know, I'm with you, but I view mine as more of a sabbatical than a, uh, you know, anything uh, necessarily a permanence. I've been on sabbatical now for nearly 12 years, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it went from that. And every time I check back, um, because one of the things that working with um, uh, the Kaipu Kukui group, uh, a fellowship uh, program, uh, every year we do a meeting on land use planning. And I'm the one that specifically sets that particular halibai up because of my background. And it okay. gives me and immerses me back into at least the, the Maui County land use development process. And in spite of the fact we keep getting further and further behind on our, our housing needs for local residents, it just gets worse and worse and harder and harder. Um, so, so before we get into the Kaipukukwe, with, with all your frustrations, uh, what, did, what did your... College professor, uh, psychology professor, father say. <laughs> um, th- to be honest with you, Dennis, <laughs> my father lived up in an ivory tower. He, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> it, it, it was sort of make it go away or something. You know, <laughs> his his strength wasn't necessarily in the day to day. Oh, oh, he was teaching. Yeah, he was a college professor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you mentioned. Uh... The, the uh, nonprofit called Kaipu Kukui Fellows. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, sure. It's it's a uh, um, uh, basically it's a leadership, a community based leadership project uh, 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 program that um, uh, seeks to reach out to emerging leaders um, and um, provide them with some tools and some experiences 
that can help them um, emerge into leaders that um, are making decisions for the, the the larger good of the community is versus any one segment of the community. Um, and the program has been going on, our first class was in 2008. So we've been going on for quite a number of years. Um, I'd, I'd like to believe we've been pretty successful. We've um, had over 200 people through our program. Um, many of them have gone on um, to uh, use the skills that they found, I think, productively and usefully. Um, we have um, had a decent amount of success within the community of our fellows. Um, you know, we've had council members. Um, in fact, right now, as soon as its inauguration takes place, we'll have two council members that are former fellows. Uh, or I, once a fellow, always a fellow, is what yeah. they all say. Um, and it's an experience-based process. So we have a series of meetings that last about, um, uh, the program is a year to year program. Um, we take, uh, better part of June and July off. So it's a 10 or 11 month program. Um, and I, uh, if anybody wants to know more about the program, um, you just look up kaipukukui.org and, um, there's, a, we have a website there and it tells you a bit about the program. And I would encourage, um, anybody on Maui that is of that, uh, the age group say our target, we don't require anything per se, but the target is say 25 to 45 years of age. So what, what does, uh, Kaipu Kukui literally mean? The vessel of light. Uh, and, and, what are this, and, and okay, you mentioned, you know, started to mention some of the projects or uh topics you guys cover can you yeah, go so, over some of the topics so far this year we've done a halavai on water we've done a halavai on economic development um last month we did it on um uh quote planning which in this case means land use planning yeah. we had a big segment on affordable housing with regards to that um we go to the um Tri Island Isles. So we'll be on Molokai in January, uh, February, excuse me, um, Lanai thereafter. We're actually getting to go back to Ko'olawe again this year as well. Um, uh, so, so the the fellows get a better understanding of the broader um, Tri Isle or Quad Isle, if you include Ko'olawe, um, that is part of Maui County. Oh, that's great. I think it's something like uh, what they have leadership Kauai. Maybe you can touch base with them when you're over here. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can share ideas. Um, yeah. So what else you got going besides your partial retirement? Well, you, we you're are kind of uh, shifting gears now. We're, we're basically right now, the immediate is um, to, uh, we're, we're moving to Kauai. Um, Haunani's family is um, firmly in Anahola. It's, uh, w w we want to establish a, a presence um, on Kauai. Um, in terms of what we're going to do going forward, I don't see, uh, I mean, I, you never say never, but I don't see myself working in scale anymore. Um, I thought about something in a nonprofit, but the way development works, it's very difficult to get stuff done in a nonprofit format. Um, the, the, you got to borrow the money from somewhere and the bank doesn't like when somebody says, oh, we're, we're going to do this project and we're not going to make any money. <laughs> they, they, they don't have, they don't have a sense of humor that way. You know, so, um, I think that, you know, if, if there's opportunities for, you know, like a small family subdivision or something of that nature, you know, the, I, I have children as well. Um, we have, um, a lot of family on Kauai that, are suffering from the same issues that all of our local families are, which is how do you stay in Hawaii? You know, and that, that is a big problem. I, I struggle because I think, like I said, we're getting worse, not better. Yeah. On Koi, uh, we've been fortunate. We got some of the housing nonprofits like Habitat for Humanity. They're doing a lot of work. On Maui also. Yeah. But, the numbers are so small relative to the larger problem. Yeah. You know? yeah but, uh, you know, we had some uh, larger projects. Uh, Mark Development did something here. Right. Uh, we got, um, I guess, the 
uh, low income housing tax credits, you know, with that, that helps, you know, with the, like you said, financing the projects, right? And Dennis, don't get me uh, wrong. Yeah. Any house yeah. is better than no house. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I, I'm not poo pooing on. You know, all I'm saying is I yeah. think that it will be for me on that kind of scale yeah. rather than you know the 50, 100, 200, yeah. 500 homes yeah. that are kind of a thing. Yeah. So that you know, there's um, you know, small small chunks here and there. I I think it's stopping over here. But uh, other than that, we see the you know really high end ones selling a lot over here i don't know if you've checked the market on Kauai. um sadly as you know we have been looking at the market dennis and yeah. like said the divergence between markets and what happens because of the high-end market with regards to some of the other markets is it's it's that way statewide but maui and Kauai are particularly um, negatively affected and uh you know recently with the best resident they've designated kind of the high end portions of Kauai is kind of like they get they had some tax benefits in Koloa and on the north shore of Kauai. I saw that I couldn't figure that one out. Yeah. But um you know if you have the money to buy it then you get more tax benefits later. So that you know uh that further fuels that portion of the real estate market. Yeah. But uh I don't know if you fit in that category, but uh, not for me, um, nor nor I. Yeah. So you got your children uh, around the islands yet? Um, my three children are um all on Oahu right now. Yeah. I'm um, finishing up school and um uh, starting their work career and whatnot. I do believe that ultimately, um, uh, you know, our goal is to figure out how to help them be able to afford. To, to live live in Hawaii, um, you know, uh, housing wise. Anyway, I mean, they're kind of on their own as far as how to put food on the table and that sort of thing. But it is something that I think that we can probably help them with um, on the housing side. Oh, that's good. What? What? Are, they're not. Uh, they're not developers. No, um, <laughs> we we tried to discourage that. Actually, oh, yeah. my eldest is a um, uh, attorney at um, uh, legal aid. Oh. Um, I have twins that are um, in their uh, mid twenties. One is in a medical school um, pre prep um, program, and the other is making his way um, in the world after getting his film degree. Oh, that's good. Yeah, you might, you might be a star. <laughs> Highly unlikely, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Scott. You got any uh, last words or words of advice or? Well, the one thing I would say, Dennis, is that um, if we don't collectively do something to actively fix the issues we have with housing, we really are going to lose our youth. Um, That's just a simple reality. And I think that globally, if we can't figure out how to get people in the canoe paddling at least in a similar direction, you know, I, I think Kauai and Maui share this in that. Um, we don't have a common vision, you know, within our population. And so no matter what anybody proposes, there's somebody trying to throw rocks on the tent. And until we figure out a way of getting people to kind of flow, at least in a similar direction, we're going to have a problem. And until government understands what they're good and not good at, and is an active participant in solving this problem, it's just going to get worse. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo to our guest, Scott Nunokawa. Mahalo to our viewers on Think Tech Hawaii. If you like this Think Tech Hawaii free media show, please help support this nonprofit platform. Aloha, ahui ho, alama pono.
Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.